go. Uh, Welcome, everybody. <laughs> uh, it's really uh, awesome to be here. This is a special place for me. I, I have found a lot of uh, forgiveness. I found a lot of compassion. Um, mostly, I found a lot of love here. Um, so tonight, we're, I'm here to speak a little bit about and talk with you guys uh, about this idea of forgiveness and opening the doorway of peace. So forgiveness, in, in its essence, is really for, before, to give, which is, is to offer or to extend unconditional love. So you know this idea of, of a perceived wrongdoing or something that's happened, we uh, offer forgiveness before it, it is even resolved, because we just, we have made a way to uh, erase it. And I think, you know, for most of us, for me anyway, uh, forgiveness is, has been a journey. And it, a journey is a process. And it begins at the point of uh, its uh, departure. And then it ends at its destination, which is uh, the emergence of something new through the idea of forgiveness. And the in-between stops that, that we make are, are the finding the injury, and we claim the injury, and then we blame the injurer. And then there's the process of balancing the scales. And, and then the ultimate uh, goal, which is, is forgiveness. So the main thing that I think that's really important is without forgiveness, there can really be no heaven. So, so that's uh, a key thing for us to think about. So it really does offer us the, can you guys see that? OK. Yeah. Uh, so it really does offer us uh, a key to, to uh, the kingdom. And the reason why it, it offers us a key, key is because time after time, we've studied that forgiveness is the most important thing to do. And, and if we are holding any ill, Ill uh, feelings in our world, in our uh, self, that we will see this world as a meaningless place. And so forgiveness really gives us meaning for in, in a world that often doesn't make any sense. And, and I can't think of a better time for us to, to really be talking about this subject than, than now. You know, we're going through so many different changes and so many things that where we, where we need forgiveness. And uh, you know, we need to forgive because the, the, for, the unforgiving mind, when, when we're holding something, it, it's, it, it's so unhappy, it's angry, and it, it is sad. It sees the world uh, in despair, and you know, it's terrified of the, of the darkness, and it's terrified of the light. You know, it's afraid to stay, and it's afraid to go. So it's really a, a, a big deal because we learn through these teachings that forgiveness is the key that really sets us free. So what is forgiveness? And at, at its base, uh, it's, it's mercy. To extend, extend mercy to uh, another and forgive, forgiving and forgetting. So it's the process uh, of which we, we go through. So I think that a lot, a lot of us probably have had, has anybody here ever struggled with, with forgiveness? Yeah, I have, I have. You know, it really, like, because it is a process. And, and sometimes, especially once we've gone through, through the complete cycle of forgiveness, what happens is, is we, end up, we end up seeing in, in uh, others, the things that we've suffered through or we've had, had that have been painful for us. And, and that is, that's compassion, when we recognize the suffering in another individual. And the love is something that is extended beyond that. And that's when we, uh, when we really look deep within ourselves to find this love and to extend it. And, and so it's, it's when we, usually it, the process involves us going inside and asking for help, asking 
to be shown a different a different vision of, of what we're seeing. So it I think the, the main concept is is like it really is it's it's a thing that creates a, a shift in the paradigm. It creates a change in the perception that we're holding because then we can see it in a different way. We see it in a different light. And um, you know, to be able to look at an, an individual and see beyond that, that thing that's causing us pain or that we don't want to, want to have is really to see a reflection of what we truly believe about ourselves in, in, in another individual. And they see that in us. So they see that in our eyes. And they, and they can tell, you know, because there's different types of forgiveness. And so when we look at this, you know, we look at uh, how, how would we use forgiveness to, uh, as a key to opening the door. So opening the door of, of forgiveness. Here we, we have uh, from the gospel according to John in chapter 10, verse, verse 7, I am the door. So Christ is the door. Jesus is the great mediator between man and God. So when we go to him and we ask for his help to find a, find a, a different way of seeing, it's through him that we will, will find that. And uh, so I think, uh, let's see there. Yeah, we, we hear this idea of, about, even though we study here, we hear that, uh, Forgiveness is our function. Forgive, and we will be free. And yet, we still hold on. Why is that that we hold on to uh, not forgiving somebody? What is it? What is, what is it in us that, that does that? And you know, I think if forgiveness, if forgiveness offers us the key to be free, then why why aren't we forgiving? everyone for everything. So when we, when we go into the actual teachings, we, we learn first that blessed are, are the merciful. And, and so that they themselves, from this place of, of wholeness within themselves, extend to another person this love that, that they have found within them. Because it's, it's an endless resource. It's not as though we're taking something and then we're emptied of, of that ourselves. Because what we end up getting in return is more love. You know? And it's, it, it's kind of that opposite effect that you think, oh, I just don't have it in me to give. I can't, I can't forgive because you know, I, I just have a holding this, uh, this idea. But I think that it's, it's that, that part of us that doesn't want to let go, that, that really needs this compassion and to go through this process. Because the same process that we would do with somebody else is the same process that we would do in ourselves. Um, and, and I think the other thing that, that we learn is, is that you know, we are our spiritual brothers and spiritual sisters, and mothers, and fathers. We're spiritual friends on, on this journey, on this road of forgiveness. And, and together we go there. Together we're trying to get home. Forgive so that you will, you will, that God will forgive you, and to keep what is truly good, to, to see the, the goodness in, in every single individual. As difficult as that may be, you know, it, love is always present. My ability to see it, our ability to see it, may be blocked, but love is always there. So if we are willing to look deeper and to begin to let go of this, this rope that we hold, because that rope, is, is we have it a rope around our anger. We have, you know, we're filled with a list of our grievances and, and all of this stuff that we're holding 
and when we're not forgiving an enemy. And so the question becomes like, like would we join in the resurrection or would we, would we join in the crucifixion? Would we ascend to heaven or would we, would we rather stay here in a prison? Because this is really the question that's, that's, that's being asked of us. And um, I think, what, the light? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, the thing is that, that happens is we have a, a perception, right? And we need to have uh, some sort of interpretation for our perception, which is also tied to our awareness. And, and I think that sometimes we get confused around, around that idea of the interpretation, you know, because it's an interpretation from only our way. And I think the beautiful thing is when we ask, ask God for his help and we pray, we're given a different interpretation, an, inter an interpretation that doesn't see it in just one way, in one dimension. And so, I, you know, like without an enemy, who, who would we be, you know, if you think about it? And, and we can have an enemy in anything. It could, be, it could be a person, it could be an institution, it could be Hillary Clinton, it could be Donald Trump, it could be a church, you know, it could be anything. Carbohydrates. We, huh? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates <laughs> is a great one. I just yeah, want more yeah. chocolate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so all of these things are, are really uh, places that we hold in us. And uh, <coughs> so love your enemy as yourself. There's not a moment, a day that goes by where we don't see something, whether it is the uh, bombing here in New York, or whether it's the gunman that, that went into uh, that nightclub in Orlando and killed all those people or the police shootings, or the black community that, that is sh shooting at the police because they're angry, or the bombings in Paris. But one of the things that has really stood out for me recently, and I think probably something that was part of the, the original reason why I thought, oh, this is so important, is, uh, is this one. And this is, uh, his name is, Oman, I think, is his name, and he's a little boy from Syria, and and this aired on CNN. And he, his family was, his house was bombed, with his brothers and his sisters and his mom and his dad, and so he is actually pulled out of this, out out of all this rubble, and they place him in this in this vehicle, and he's just sitting there, and and you look at him, and and he's in. He's not crying, you know, he's in a state of shock. He's in a state of trauma because he doesn't understand, you know? He's, he's totally innocent. And I think that's the thing that I really uh, thought about was the innocence of, of him, you know? And the innocence that is in all of, all of these, uh, other men that, that, that have been involved in these terror, acts of terrorism because the innocence is in them as well. And, and whether or not we can see it or the question of whether or not we'll begin to look for it, that, that is a, a big deal. So uh, I, I think I want to read to you something from another uh, teaching that I study, which is A Course in Miracles. And it says, it is in this child in you, your father knows as his own son. It is this child who knows his father. He desires to go home so deeply, so unceasingly. His voice cries out to you to please let him rest for a while. He doesn't ask for just a few moments so that he can catch his breath and breathe the holy air of his father. When we see forgiveness from 
our point of view, we see one thing. But when God, when we look at how God sees us and how God forgives, these, these are just some of the things that come up, you know. Uh, in, you know, in God's eyes, love is never absent. And in God's heart, forgiveness is never impossible. In God's embrace, no one is ever left alone. No one is ever forgotten. And, and these are just some amazing things that when we say, I can't figure it out, he says, I'll direct your footsteps. I'm too tired. Because we are tired of this battle. I will give you rest. It's impossible. In him, all things are possible. Nobody loves me. I love you. And I can't forgive myself. I forgive you. It's not worth it. It will be worthy. I'm not smart enough. I'll give you wisdom. I'm not able. I am able. I can't go on. My grace is sufficient. So these are just some of the passages that we've studied here at this center, and that I'm sure that other people that maybe haven't studied Spiritism have studied in the Bible that you would you would recognize. So you know this is kind of uh, this is a, uh, from a song. If God had a name, what would it be? And would you call it to His face if you were faced with Him in all His glory? And if He had a face, what would it look like? And would you want to see if it meant that you would have to believe in things like? heaven and Jesus and the prophets and all of the saints. What if God was one of us? If you could ask just one question, what would it be? What is the, the price that we're willing to pay for forgiveness? You know? And when we and when we go to him, that's that's how we go. We go with whatever it is that we have, have done, we bring to the altar. And we place it there. And, and he asks us if we've done everything to reconcile this with our brother. And so this is going to be the lead-in for a short film that I want to show you. It's, uh, it's called Admissions. And over a third of our world, of our planet right now, is at war. A third of our planet is, is in a war somewhere. So how do we enable this process of peace? And how do we begin to open the door of that? I, I, I was inspired with this film through somebody in my Course in Miracles study. And they, they showed it to me. And it just it represents so well, in a, in a very beautiful way, what we study here in at inner enlightenment and what we learned through the process of, of, of this. So what, what did you think? I mean, it really, I think it really does a great job of, 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 of telling the story of uh, what we experience. And, and, and I love this from, from, from the gospel. It says, love covers a multitude of sins. And it asks us to go inside of ourselves, to take the hoes and the, and the, and the plows, to really look inside of ourselves, and, and to pull up the weeds, the things that are deeply rooted in us, uh, that are based in this anger, based in this ha hatred, and, and that to nourish the good seeds in, in us that the Lord has entrusted us with, with because if we do, that then they bear, bear the fruits. These efforts that, that, that you see here are, are from the fruits of somebody's labor, somebody's greater vision with love. And um, I, I think you know, that, that is the thing that we, we recognize. In our lives, where God has been there for us and where he has loved us, when maybe we couldn't love ourselves. You know, I find God's grace all around me. And, and today, I, th I think, as in the film, you know, we, it says we, we need to awaken. We've been in this deep sleep. We've been, we've been with our faces pressed against the glass. And we can't see the whole story. You know, we've been bound to this story. And, and love, when we take the time to go through its processes, 
will free us of that hatred. And I think that that, that scene with the woman was, was so poignant. You, you know, because it's, 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 my fingerprints are on everything in this world. And how can I experience joy in my life while my brother or sister across the other side of the world is suffering? Because there really can be no joy. And, um, and whether that is, it even go, comes to our environment and the way that we consume. You know, sometimes we consume, I'm so guilty of this, and, but I'm, I'm becoming more conscious of it, more awakened. Uh, in the way that I have consumed and that it's affected the planet, you know, because I, I uh, also have uh, a charity that's very close to my heart, which is Housing Works, and they work with the homeless, and um, they have these thrift shops that are all around the city. And do you know that out of all the, all the stuff that we donate to thrift shops, only 10% of it actually gets sold? And, and then that money goes to the whatever the, the ways that they use it. They happen to use it for the homeless and the medical and the housing. But then all the rest of that stuff, you know, the disposable things that we buy, gets bulked up and it gets sent to a country like Bang, you know, that Bangladesh or someplace where there is low cost space. And, and a lot of these products that, that we're consuming are <coughs> made so with such inexpensive uh, technologies and, and, and toxic products. So they sit there in bulk and they're absorbed into the soil and when they're retreated and repurposed with, uh, for, to be used in different ways, all of that wash goes off into the, into the uh, waters. It pollutes the, the water system, the soil, and nothing can grow there. Those people who are so impoverished have that on their in, in their land, and and we consume thinking it doesn't like we think we're doing a favor by buying a ten dollar t-shirt, and and we we see that that really is not true. And so it's a call for us all to awaken. Love one another as I have loved you. And, and I think uh, this is really, really about love. Be really, it begins with <coughs> us. It begins in, in finding it within ourselves. Because if you, if you can't find love within you, how are you ever going to be able to love another, another person? You know, so that is, is really the, the whole thing in a nutshell is, is that God really, in his Gospels, tells us that it's the maximum of his, of his commandments is, is to love, love God with all your heart and, and love your, your neighbor as yourself. And when we do, you know, I think that what happens is that reflection that we see in each other's eyes, that truth, that is the truth beyond what we would see in this world is who we truly are. The innocence of that, that, that child is the innocence in you. And whether or not it's clear to you today or whether or not you can see it, it's there. I lo love this quote uh, by Reinhold Niebuhr, who is an uh, American theologian. He says, forgiveness is the final form of love. And, and it is, because when we let go of all of those things, we free everybody else around us. And we create a, a, a fertile ground for, for really good things to happen. Uh, Reinhold is probably best known for a prayer that he wrote. And that prayer is uh, one that I, that I hear a lot because I attend meetings. And it's called the, the Serenity Prayer. And it, and it reads, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. What does that mean? God, give me grace to accept, to welcome deep in, within my heart and deep within my mind the serenity, the calmness, to be peaceful, untroubled, amidst the noisy confusion of the world. 
to have peace within myself. The things, whatever they are, what are they? The world, our family, our past hurt, you know, suffering, guilt, shame, whatever that is. This is the place where we find acceptance, you know? And the courage to fearlessly look inside of ourselves for the ability and to change the things which should be changed. The strength by which we can go face to face with all of these things that we encounter. And the wisdom lived through our experience of having done it, having gone through it, and the quality of good judgment in our right actions. Knowing right from wrong, being able to distinguish love from hate, fear from, fear from uh, truth, doubt from faith, living one day at a time and enjoying mm -hmm. one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, I, I screwed that up there, <clears throat> taking, as Jesus did, this imperfect world exactly as it is, not as I would have it be. Because every, every moment that I'm in represents an opportunity for me to find this truth. We have been brought together as brothers and sisters in spirit so that together in all of the things that we have difficulty accepting, even about our spiritual center, you know, all those challenges are the places in us that, is, that God's trying to grow us stronger, to help us to see beyond that. And, and when we do, those things cease to be a problem because the things that separate us are gone. We're united. We're, we, we're in this oneness, and we start to enable this process of peace. Trusting that you, God, love, expressed through each one of us will make things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy in the next. We have to make this decision. You know, this is a decision that only we can make. 